Good to be here with you, and good to be here without you, actually. It'd be awkward if you were all here at this moment because it'd be too much. This is a small space. This is minimal. You know, you get minimal space and you just, you can't do much with it. To a spider, this would be a big room, but to a man, this is, uh, this is nothing to really write home about. Today's episode is brought to you by Magic Mind. Magic Mind. Oh, damn. I dropped it, man. Ta-da. Magic Mind. It um it is the anti-procrastination sipper. If you want to really create flow state and get yourself out of procrastination, get that Magic Mind. It's the organic alternative to 5-hour energy. Magicmind.co. Use promo code Theo for 10% off. Oh, man, what's going on? A lot. A lot. The diamond one, baby. You know that, boy. The diamond one. What else? I went hunting. I went hunting for something. Um, and outdoors hunting. You know, not just looking for something like a remote control. I'm talking, I did it. I went out there. And I'll tell you about it. So, I uh, a friend of mine out here, an adult, he knows a man who does falconry. You know, deviant birds. And I'm not going to say that these birds are caught up with the dark arts, but I, I mean, they are, each one of them had probably half a can of Voldemort in them. And that's really the truth. And, um... So the man does falconry. And, um, you know, Bobby Kennedy Jr. had talked about it when he was a guest on here about being around falcons and, and you know, kind of doing homing pigeons, that sort of thing when he was growing up. But basically what happened was we went and met up with this man behind a church or in front of a church actually first. First we met in front of a church. We pulled up. He had a maroon van. With two decent uh, birds in it, big, you know, big. I'm talking about these things. Were these things were from the damn? They were from the middle of the Bible. These things, they was really. I mean, these were, you know, some of the get those Game of Thronesers. These these birds, bro. If these birds shit, it would drown a baby. You know what I'm saying? It was a. They had these birds were, they were real birds. You know, like you won't see, if you see one of these birds with a canary. It's only because they trying to fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like these birds was more about, they were more prehistoric, prehistorical. You know, like if you went back in time and and you saw a bird, it might be one of these. That's what I'm telling you. So anyway, we get out there and the man has two falcons in the back of a red van. And I didn't believe him. You know, because I grew up in kind of a, you know, kind of a troubled area. And a lot of times a guy says, hey, I got two falcons in the back of a van. Somebody's breaking their dick out, to be honest. And uh, but this guy, you know, he it was they were real honest and um, and they had them, you know, and everybody was clothed and they had the birds. And so we go back behind the church and he has a friend there, another man. And now we're with two men, adult men. And they both had on, um, what is it called when you're hopeful? The It's like a basketball rim, but it's for your hand. It's like a, um, Jesus, not a championship. Uh, they both had on wedding rings. And so next thing you know, we get in the woods. They have the birds. They have a little dog, too. And the dog, and they're called uh, Tumble Creek Falconry. I want to get the name right. Hold on. I think that was it. Tumble Creek Falconry. And they do falconing. And uh, and so anyway, we get out there. And so they give us a big stick. Because they want you to have a big stick if you're out there. This thing called, what is it called here? Uh... Turnbull Creek Falconry. And they're legitimate. And so you get out there and they give you a big stick, like a big like a bottom of an axe, like an axe 
like if you're like if you're an axe person but you quit axing you know but you still want to have the stick but you don't want to have the blade and they it's about four feet long and you go you go along you beat the trees right you beat the trees and um and the birds first of all here let me let me backpedal hold on the birds um the birds uh the birds they get them out the cage they got helmets on they got little like uh hide and go seek little outfits you know almost like if your grandmother wanted if your grandmother wanted to make you a hide and go seek outfit for when you counted they, it's like a little um it covers your eyes you know what horses wear if you ever been to a fancy city and they got a couple horses down there and they usually have an alcoholic that's running them and they'll, you know, for a few dollars, they'll pull you and your lady through the city and you can ask her if she wants to marry you or not or whatever, or you don't have to ask her. A lot of times by the end of the horse ride, you're like, damn, I don't even want to marry this woman. And so you just keep the ring in your pocket and you go home. But, um, but anyway, it's like the blinders, like the blinders. So they have that on the birds. Two to birds, they come out, they both got uh, little blinders on, full blinders. They can't see anything. Like if you asked them how many fingers you was holding up, they wouldn't squawk. So they got the two birds and, um, and dude, it feels like old school. It feels like you would be the, it feels like if you showed up with these things, you would get the most pussy at a renaissance fair and i'm sorry for saying pussy as well so i want to say that also but um you would be oh you would have all the big titty at a ren fair if you showed up with these straight up just falcons baby these heat seekers i'm talking about the lord's freaking southwest airlines baby big birds so anyway they come out with the little head caps on and they're moving but it looks like they're sleeping but basically um so then you start walking in the woods, you take off their head caps, and uh, and they fly up into the trees. So now you have two birds up in the air, in the trees, and sometimes they'll swoop off and do a, uh, just a loop-de-loop -loop and come back to a branch. And so the rest of us men, grown men, we wander. And you get in different lines and you wander through the woods and everybody has like a piece of an axe. A stick, an axe bottom, an axe leg. I don't know what it's called. Axe leg. And you hit the trees with it. And you hit the underbrush. And you hit the trees. And you're hoping you round up a squirrel. Or round up a little rabbit, you know. One of Mr. McGregor's little buddies, little cottontail. And you keep going and the birds, they'll, as you walk, the birds, will they will kind of jump from, they'll hop they're, or kind of coast from one tree to the next. So you guys are moving in like this, like this unique pack where they're upstairs and you're downstairs, but everybody's in the same kind of move, move, moving hunt house. It's like this, you're just, it's not a real house, but you're just, you know, you're kind of in a pack. And then suddenly something will happen. Like you'll hit a tree and it'll make a... And a little squirrel will have been being real secretive. And he'll move his neck. And that are, that's all it takes for these uh, big birds. Is one just. Just one jostle. Of a neck muscle. And they. And next thing you know they're on the tree. And they start to. They start to like. Uh, corner the, the squirrel. So we get the squirrel, he's moving, they corner the squirrel. So one of the birds gets ahead of it, one of them blows it. And then they jump from branch to branch, bum, 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 bum. And then next thing you know, one of them goes in for the attack. And uh, and that was it, man. We, you know, we did, they did us, and that's nature. You know, people want to say this and that, that's nature, baby. Okay, and it's all... You know, God laid out those mar those marbles. You know, He laid that's we're not. You can say this and that, but that's that's somebody else's plan. Don't talk to me about it. Go pray about it if you have an issue with it. Because that's just that's what those birds do. So anyway, the birds were you know they get a squirrel and then 
Oh, and the birds will hold the squirrel down. It was wild. So they they caught one squirrel, and then they caught a. There's a little dog as well. A little white and black dog, maybe Mexican. I don't know. I didn't get a good look in his eyes, but he was mixed. He was real, real mixed, man. He uh, he had that Jack Russell in him, baby. That Eddie Bravo. You know what I'm saying. And he was real pertinent. He was real particular. He would go over. He was only hunting. And if you try to pet him or scratch his belly, he'd fucking kick you, bro. This dog, it wasn't, this wasn't no, you know, he was on, on the job. That's like a FedEx man. You try to run up and tickle him or something or, you know, or hide one of his boxes, he might fuck you up. And that's like this guy, this, this dog was. So we went through... And what else did they catch? They caught a rabbit and a possum. And it was just magical, man. At the beginning of the day, I'm like scared of the birds. And by the end of the day, I'm like, I'm just, I'm like, I feel like the birds are like working for me. And I'm in, I mean, I feel like I'm on the damn fifth page of the Bible, baby. I'm keyed up. You know what I'm saying? We're hunting and they're picking up stuff i'm sending one of the birds to go get me some uh twizzlers and mike and ikes like these birds it's just really you start to become like uh conan the barbarian so it was exceptional man man it was really really exceptional and we did some videography of it and we may put something up at some point point. You know, i thought about trying to do something where i learn new stuff like just how to do new things or have new experiences um, cause I'd been looking for things in the woods when I was young, but I'd never been actually really hunting, you know, except to hunt. Oh, actually that's not true. I've been, I've been out to hunt pigs and I've been out to hunt, uh, boar, like boars, but I've been out, been out to hunt, um, ducks one time, but you know, I like that hand to hand combat and it feels more like that with the, uh, b- with the, with the birds with the hawks I mean, they might have been hawks i think they were they might have been hawks but um not atlanta i think they were from well they must have been from here so yeah local hawks but uh whatever they were man it was fascinating it was fascinating and and yeah we got a real experience and it was like about a three four hour high uh hunt and it just i don't know it just made me feel so involved with nature you know, it made me feel right there. I just felt, I just felt like a root. That's what I felt like. And I'm used to feeling like a branch. And it was pretty powerful. Um, so, yeah, I can't believe I did it. And I'm so grateful that I got to do it. My friend Bizzle took me out there. And he's a white guy. Even though he has the name of a nine-year-old black kid, he really is a white man. And he took me out and... um. We had this fellow named Monsell went with us and did some videography. And uh, the fellows that took us were just great, man. That's Tur- Tur- Turnbull Creek Falconry. And we'll put a link, man. You go get an experience with those guys. But it was worth it was worth uh, it was worth the time. It was worth the time. What else is going on? Um, oh, so on the drive there. Right, I'm driving out to the falconry, and I pass by this car, like a little red kind of, um, it was like a Mustang maybe, or a, it was a, uh, and this dude was sitting right by, like right by the window, uh, and he was driving, but also kind of leaning like towards the window, and he had like, He was kind of leaning up close by the wheel, but also by the window, kind of. And he had a track suit on. You could see the edge of the track suit, Adidas style. And uh, and he had like the stripes down the middle of his car going over the back, you know, that shit. Where like it's going to make you go faster, but it doesn't. It just means you maybe finished high school, that kind of vibe. And I thought, oh, this dude is a drug dealer. This guy is a high this guy is a high school drug dealer. And then it made me think, well, why do I think that? And then I realized that every high school drug dealer looks the same. None of them there is no no 
crime person is worse at disguising themselves than a high school drug dealer. First of all, they all have like a name like Spoonie, Juicy, Tate, uh, Lil Danny, bro. Lil Danny, you know, uh, uh, Boof, um, Pook Pook. You know, they all got the same type of name. They all wear like kind of that tracksuit, slicked hair with maybe that Caesar cut chain. And they all drive like a fancy car. Like they all, and there's no, you're like, oh, that's the drug dealer. Like why doesn't the high school drug dealer try and look not like a drug dealer? How hard would it be for you to get a freaking sombrero, dog? Get a little uh, tag that says uh, manager, you know? Or even manger, misspell it. Who gives a shit? Get a freaking name tag. Get a job at Books of Millions, man. Damn, bro. You know, every drug dealer, unfortunately, looks at they all, and they would, some, if they didn't wear the, um, the uh, tracksuit, they wear the white tee. The white tee, maybe Timberlands or maybe, uh, you know, uh, fatty sneakers and speakers. And they all work at a, uh, like an auto sound place. All of them. That's where they either work or hang out at. And they just sell drugs to get more and more speakers put into their car. And then here's what happens. Sadly, the speakers are so loud when the cops finally try to pull them over, they can't even hear the cop sirens. So then they get resisting arrest because they couldn't eat because the whole system leads them to not be able to hear. Then they end up as a hard of hearing 30 year old trying to get a GED, but they never change the style, baby. They still drive the Mustang. They still have the stripes down the back. Dude, the drug dealers in high school, sometimes they would even have the word drugs spray painted or uh, airbrushed on the back of the car. Dude, if you're going to sell drugs, don't write drugs on the car, dog. Get a overalls. Get a um uh that. Do some disguise yourself, you know? Get a glasses, man. Get a uh um axe. Get a axe, man. A shoulder chopper, man. Get a axe. You know, you just have to do things to not look like a drug dealer. But unfortunately, every high school drug dealer looks only like a drug dealer praise god baby um today's episode is brought to you by better help now look you know i'm a i'm a someone who struggled with mental health you know and uh self-worth issues and you know doubting myself um I think about my feelings a lot and I feel about my about my thinking. So once I get stuck in that ping pong space right there, it's really tough for me to operate. And sometimes I need help. Somebody needs somebody to help me unlock the door and say, hey man, what are you doing? You're in a paddle ball court here by yourself. I say, all right, I'll step out. Because otherwise, I don't know. I'll stay in there and just think about my feelings and feel about my thinkings, baby. Is there something interfering with your happiness or that is preventing you from achieving your goals? Well, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. That's what they do. You know, that's what they do, BetterHelp. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's under two days, man. And hell, sometimes it can be even quicker. I remember I pulled over on the side of the road. I'd already created an account and I pulled over on the side of the road one day and I needed some help and I got it immediately. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. This is therapy. If you need therapy, they can get it for you. You can FaceTime, you can phone time, you can text. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. BetterHelp.com slash reviews. BetterHelp.com slash Theo. And join the over million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states, and that is beautiful. 
That is beautiful. Shout out to my friend Megan, who's almost a counselor. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And TPW listeners get 10% off uh, their first month at betterhelp.com slash T-H-E-O. You know, I, I, I do a lot of gaming on my phone. You know, recently I've been doing, um, what have I been doing? Uh, what is it called? Uh, wishing well, not wishing well, Bitcoin. I've been doing Bitcoining. But also I've been doing chess. You know, I like to play games on my phone. Well, you know, all that time you spent playing your favorite mobile games on your phone, you could have been winning money and prizes. That's right. Now, they're merging, making money and playing games at skills, S-K-I-L-L-Z dot com. Turn mobile gaming into cash, baby boy. Turn it into cash, baby. Skills dot com literally has the greatest games on the planet. And you'll probably bump into me there. That's right. I'm getting on. I want to play games and make the money at the same time. Why am I out here milling around, doing nothing? I'm playing Asteroid Belt or something, some game, and I and I'm and I, I'm broke after. And hell, I was broke before. Change it up. Skills makes it super easy to get started, and they have games for everyone. Classics like Solitaire Cube and Twenty One Blitz, and fun new games like Blackout, Bingo, Hubba Hubba. It's fair because you're matched against players at your skill level. New users use my promo code T-H-E-O because I got you double the cash to start playing with double the cash. That's promo code T-H-E-O for double the cash. To get started, go to skills.com slash T-H-E-O. That's S-K-I-L-L-Z with a Z dot com slash Theo. Make money while you play your games. You on your lunch break? Make some money. Must be 18 or older. Terms and conditions apply. Not available in all states. See website for details. All right. As we come back, man, I want to make a uh, a message out to uh, Boots on the Ground Luke. And he's a fellow over there in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And he's a white guy, maybe ginger, semi-ginger. And he uh, going in for brain operation. Something's wrong with his brain. He said they said he needs more room in his brain or whatever. And shit, I don't know. Sound like I, I wouldn't even get it done, but he's getting it done. So just want to let you know we love you, Luke. And um, you know, uh, you know, we hope you survive. And if and if you survive, man, um, send us in some pictures or something, you know, and do you know show us a uh, before and after. You know, show us that new two, three bedroom brain you're going to have. And if you don't survive, bud, I just want to let you, I hate to say it, but, you know, let's get it out there. And if you don't survive, I just want to let you know that um, we'll keep you alive here on the podcast somehow. So uh, my thoughts are with you this week. And that's Boots on the Ground Luke over there. And Boots on the Ground Luke is, um, he was in a, I think he was hit by a tractor or something a couple years back, but he, uh, what was wait hold on uh he 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 gave the best man he he was the one that hit us up a month back about the best man speech for his brother and you guys gave him some recommendations so wishing him uh the best of luck what else is going on oh i saw the uh well look let's get into it man i saw the diamond fight baby and I want to thank everybody for all the DMs and messages I got. I can't even imagine what Dustin got. Just by being a friend of Dustin's, I got, um, I got, I, man, I must have got 4,000 messages congratulating me um, on that man's victory. And he's a victory man. If you saw the, if you saw the fight, you know, he came out with a game plan, which, it just it was showed a lot of evolution of him as a fighter. I thought this is, you know, there's two ways that I look at Dustin. I look at him as a as, as a friend and somebody that I care about, and then I look at him as a fighter. You know, so um, you know, on the fighting side, I think a lot of people expected him to just come out and be, you know, Captain Punchy out there. You know, fucking Benedict Fists out there. You know what I'm saying? Fucking Larry Knuckles out there, just bucking the trend, baby. You know. And just hoping for the best. 
Um, but he came out revamped. I mean, he would be a vampire, but with the sharp teeth on the bottom. You feel me? He came out revamped. And he had a plan. And he executed it, man. And there was something about him winning. And I felt this in a lot of people that were that were cheering him on that you just felt hopeful about stuff in your own life or things in the world. You know, you felt like, you know, the sun was going to come up tomorrow. You just felt like that a little. Um, and I love what his wife said at the at the end of the fight. Y'all aren't going to. Don't doubt my husband again. Something like that. I just, you know, I just, you know, they just have never paid him fair. They've never paid him fair. And for him to be there in that hotel for two weeks and he's looking out and Connor's out there on that yacht, on that barge. Connor's owns a damn barge. You know, Connor's out there just. And I mean, I don't know if he could see it from his hotel window or not, but if that doesn't create some determination in you. Um, but I didn't doubt him, man. I was definitely scared for him because Connor's a lethal man. He's got that freaking shoulder snake, baby, that, that freaking arm, dog. And his arm is a lot longer than it looks. Jesus. You know, his arm, you could row a boat with his arm. You know, he got a long arm and... um. Yeah, it was just amazing, man. I, 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 it was just, it just, you know, I was excited for Dustin as a fighter. I was excited for Dustin as a, a person as well, and about his future. And, um, yeah, it was just, man. I was just elated. I was literally swinging from the rafters of a bar that we went to to watch it at. Like they had some steel beams, and I'm in there just swinging back and forth like a chimp. I actually hurt my neck swinging on it. So. I've had neck pain and now I just, you know, I just have more. Um, but I just, I mean, I thought it was a good fight. You know, it was a quick fight, but I thought it was a good fight. I mean, Connor was still landing some blows. Kev, uh, you know, Dustin was hitting him with those kicks. I mean, it was just a lot going on. Man, it was, but I, I was just, I was, I was just, ex I was excited. I was excited, man, because I picked the wrong guy a lot of times in fights and, you know, betting on the Colts or different shit like that. You go to the horse races, you lose, you know, you lose on, you know, you bet on, you know, $60 on freaking, you know, Donnie's enemy to come in third or whatever, or, you know, whatever it is, Starburst Enema. All Horses have the weirdest names, but finally to get, you know, just to get it right. And I want a thousand dollars from your boy Brandon Shopvac. And here was the funniest thing was I got a text from Dustin after the fight, and it said, <laughs> "Tell Brennan he owes you that. <laughs> Tell Brennan he owes you that money." That's what he said, man. Ah. Uh, so I just can't imagine. I think also there was a level of just feeling proud of uh for Dustin, you know, and feeling proud for him and. Um, yeah, I think there was something about, it was like, man, I can't imagine how awesome he must feel right now, you know, just how proud of himself he must feel and just how just deservant, you know, you finally, I mean, damn, his experience with the UFC seemed like he's the one, he goes up to the ATM and he's got to put in money. And finally, it comes out, and you know, I, I think I, you know, I, I think he's transcended the sport, and you know, I've told him that, and um, and, and I'm I'm excited to see his future. I'm excited to see what he does inside of the ring, and then outside of the ring. Um, I think on the fighting side, it's interesting. How do you figure out who he fights next? Because, you know, if you go for the Connor trilogy, that's right there, but he just beat him. And it's been five years since the last one. Like, you know, I agree with Dustin that Michael Chandler, who I love, Michael Chandler's, uh, and I hope to have him back in here soon. And 
Um, but he he should have to fight more guys. I mean, I understand Dustin's point of view. You know, uh, man, I felt bad for Dan Hooker. I, I really like Dan Hooker. He seemed like a really cool guy. Um, I also thought the whole way the fight came together was amazing, you know. Um, Conor McGregor is an Irish man. He's an Irish man, and I love Ireland, you know. Shout out Dublin, you feel me? And shout out Scotland as well, man. You know, and Scotland is just drunk Ireland. Let's be honest, uh. And um and I you know what I thought that I mean you know, the whole thing kind of started if I and I and I may be wrong. But it started as a charitable thing. Connor and Dustin were gonna fight for charity to raise money for their charities. And then UFC saw that and got involved, you know. Um and and so the whole thing started from a place of charity. I thought that Connor was, was, you know, he's a businessman now. I mean, he's got to wake up the next day and do business. He's got, you know, he, there's a difference when you go from being an athlete to, to the owner of the gym. You're doing two different things. It's two different brains. And I'm not saying that Connor's not still one of the greatest fighters of all time. I believe it is. I mean, I just watched all of his fights in the past month. Um, I remember after I watched all of his fights, literally, I texted Dustin. I said, "Hey, man, where's you? How's your how's your head, man? Are you how you feeling? You know, I was fucking scared, dude. I hurt my neck. I hurt my neck watching the fight. That's how excited I was." Um. But no, I thought that Connor was a class act, and I thought that Dustin, you know, I'm just obviously glad that he won. And there's just no, you know, he can't, there's, you can't deny him anymore. And I felt his angst after the fight. You could feel his angst, you know, he's angsted out. And yeah, he just said being there for two weeks. And, you know, at a certain point, if, if, uh, Dana, whatever the man's name is, Dana Wallace or whatever. I don't know what his name is, but Dana. Uh, if Big Dana, the white money man, if he doesn't, if you don't treat your employees well enough at some point, then they, they're going to lose the desire to work with you. And I, I'm just, look, I don't know. Also, I don't know anything. She may be listening to this saying, man, Theo doesn't know anything. And you'll be, and you, <laughs> You would be right. But I, I I just you know, you gotta you gotta pay your employees. You gotta pay them. You gotta want them to ride while you ride. And I think people could say, well, you know, Connor's the one that sells the tickets and this and that, and some of that's fair, very fair. You know, what Connor's done for that sport is amazing. And, and I'm new to the sport. I don't know that much. But I think you're in the place now where you have to, where do, you, you want to pay the man. You know, and I think that, the, you know, who was James J. Braddock? Where was he from? Oh, he's an American boxer. Well, I think you got a new James J. Braddock, man. I, that's what it felt like. The hot sauce boss, baby, that Cinderella man himself, uh, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. And um, and, and you know we love him here. But I was ecstatic, man. I was so, so, you know, I was uh, I was kind of bummed for Connor. I mean, you know, I don't like to see the people lose. I want, I wish at the end, every you know, everybody kind of won. But, uh, but, yeah, I watched it here in the Central East, man. And they all, you know, Michael Chandler lives here. And so they were going bonkers for him. And his wife came back. She went home and watched it and then came back to the bar after. And she was, uh, they were all cheering when she came in. It was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just a hopeful time. There was something hopeful about it. There was something exciting about it. Especially at a time when big business is winning everything, it feels like. And the little man has been knocked down. And then you see, uh, a man like Dustin, who's not a little man, but you see him say, hey, not today. Not on my watch. 
Um, and I'm, you know, I'm done fanboying, but I was, you know, I was just, uh, I was stoked for him. The guy's been on quite a journey and he, and he has to prove himself every time. And I think a lot of us can relate to that journey of con of just constantly having to prove ourselves. So, man, but it was, it was definitely exciting. Um, what else? I'll tell you this, and we'll get into some calls. You guys had some great calls that came in. Um, places you enjoyed as a child eating. Uh, you know, um, different places like that, and a couple questions came in. Um, and then I want to talk to you about some personal stuff as well a little bit. Uh, support for the podcast this past weekend is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the belt grooming. I can tell you right now, it's Manscaped. If you're gonna put anything around your your crotch or your nuts or your body or your cooter, it better be a Manscaped item. Manscaped just released their new cologne sent to help you feel and smell good all over and at all times. Buff your nuts out with that scent. Look, everyone knows Manscaped has the perfect package 3.0 for all your below-the-waist grooming needs. But now they got that refined cologne signature scent by Manscaped. You don't want to be smelling like somebody else's body, somebody else's ass or whatever. Anything like that body, low body. And Manscaped have a new refined cologne signature scent with the same signature scent that's in all Manscaped formulas. A perfect complement to the Manscaped collection. Light, approachable, and gentlemanly in all the right ways. I think that describes my crotch light and approachable. Uh, be sure to check out um, Manscaped Refined Cologne to complete your set and smell great anytime. It's time to feel sexy. They can help. Get 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash T-H-E-O and support the podcast. Um, get 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash Theo, that's 20% off with free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash T-H-E-O. Look good, smell good, feel good with Manscaped. Um, what else? What else? Oh, I don't know. If you watch UFC, I don't know what was tougher. Seeing Michael Chandler fight Dan Hooker or then having a watch Michael Chandler do a backflip off of the cage. I don't know which one was harder for me. I don't know which, if I would rather have to fight Dan Hooker or do a backflip off the cage, man. Both looked extremely <laughs> freaking insane. Um, but kudos to Michael Chandler, man, on his victory and probably the greatest UFC debut of all time to come right out and and a lot of time in UFC they'll do there's a bit of a dance in the beginning you know there's a bit of a non kind of a non non dancing capoeira of, of sorts a violent capoeira but Michael Chandler didn't do that he came straight out like that dog like a you know like a poor person neighborhood dog in the in the in the nineties. That thing. It ain't gonna smell you first, man. It's, it'll bite. So Ah and it's good. So that's what was going on. Um what else? What else we got? Oh, I wanna recommend a movie to you I watched and this movie called Our Friend on Amazon. And it's expensive. It's a twenty dollar re. It's a twenty dollar buy in, and you get to watch it. You can watch it three times if you want. I watch it one time. You know, I'm no fucking pervert, but uh, and it's a sad one. Watch it with a friend, with a loved one. You know, it's a, just a. 
It's interesting. But, um, yeah. It's just an interesting movie. If you, if you get a chance, you you watched everything. You haven't wa- watched Our Friend. And, uh, and I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, what else? And another thing I watched was Tiger Woods' documentary. And I think it's on HBO Maximum. And it's interesting. It's a lot about a father and son and their relationship. And a lot about the media. You know, um, and a lot about popularity and fame. And, you know, the media really used Tiger. You know, his dad says in there, he says, uh, you know, this is my son. This is my greatest gift. Use him wisely. And at the end, I feel like, Jesus, who is that? Who would email me right now? My God. Mm, Sorry. And by the end, I feel like, you see like kind of how a father used his son in some ways you see how the media used the father and the son you see how the son used things substances to make him feel okay women sex you know anything you can be addicted to sex drugs gambling money anger you know there's food there's every everything can be a you know, a supplement for addiction. Um, and it was just, it was just this fascinating circle of like, cause his dad says, use him wisely. I think is the line he says, no, the father actually, he says, this is my treasure. Please accept it and use it wisely. And yeah, it's just fascinating. Just how much like work the dad put. I think he saw us a natural gift in his son for, um, doing golf, golf, you know, golf, golf and then um and then just took it to another level you know spent so much time and and training him and then kind of you know i think probably from the father's eyes it looked like kind of unleashed him on the world um and it's just fat it was just pretty fascinating like because then the media played like this race card, but I'm sure Tiger and his family, they were all in it. You know, they were, it was just, you know, it's just the way media does things. Um, try to get an angle, you know. Um, but then he gets so big and so popular that just the pressure of like finding something that's just his own, you know, you'll find addiction. That's easy. Um, and it talks about his addiction to women, sex addiction. Um, which some of the stuff I can relate to, man, I could just relate to nothing like on his level of popularity. I don't mean that, but just, you know, the feeling of something inside of you not being there and needing something on the outside to make you forget that you're missing whatever you're missing. Um, But it's fascinating, man. Those are two good things to watch if you like to watch stuff. If you like to look at stuff. Now, if you just want to go back to high school and buy drugs, you can holler at your boy Big Pat, all right? Slick, you can holler at Spoonie, Spotty Yachty, Ricky. You know, Lil Danny, bro, Lil Danny. So. Dude, I remember being at school and the drug dogs came in there. And I was high as hell, man. I was high as fucking four gay dudes in a fucking hot air balloon, bro. I was fucking high as fuck. You know? I was fucking high. You know what I'm saying? If you need me, I'll be up there, bitch. I'm high. And um, I remember just, I was scared of dogs at the time. And I'm like hiding by the teacher and shit. And they thought I was all fucked up. And I was. I was high. 
but I was also scared of dogs, you know, which really are kind of feel like the same thing. And uh, and I asked the teacher point blank. I said, well, can the dog just smell if I'm high? And he asked the policeman that was with the dog and they said, no. I said, all right, we good then, fam. We good. Let's get to some of your calls. But first, I got to let you know that uh, the time is coming to get your body right. And God, I need it, man. Man, I've been in just so much pain, man. I just got so much pain from just, man, every every freaking week something's wrong with my body, bro. And I'm sorry to sound like I'm complaining, but I want to go do jujitsu. I want to be able to do yoga. I want to be able to do the things I want to do. And I've just been feeling beaten down. You know, it's a new year. And it's and it is it is my resolution, as it is many people's, to get in better shape, physically and mentally. And I like to work out, but sometimes the workouts you want to do, you can't do them. It says you need a, uh, you know, you need a couple barbells, you need a uh, a hillside and a big boulder. Like just some of the workouts is too egregious or egregious, bro. And I don't want to spend $2,000 on a Tony Little Gazelle freestyler or some Susan Sarandon, you know, uh, you know, a damn, uh, you know, a swimming tank or something for your yard. I can't afford it. So I'm saying Beachbody on Demand offers 1,500 at-home workouts plus nutrition plans. So no matter what your goals are, they have a program that will help you build and keep healthy habits. Come on, come on. This is the company behind P90X, Insanity, and 21 Day Fix. Anytime you've ever seen a black guy or Asian guy getting fit on television, they're behind that. Check out Beachbody's newest programs like Muscle Burns Fat and 80 Day Obsession. Dun, dun, dun. They have celebrity super trainers like Tony Horton, Yoel Freeman, and Autumn Calabrese. Calabrese. You can access it anywhere, anytime. 2020 is behind us. It's a new year and it's time to get in shape to get a special free trial. No obligation membership text T H E O to 30, 30, 30. That's right. Text T H E O to 30, 30, 30. You'll get full access to the entire platform, all the workouts, nutrition information and support. You need support. Absolutely free. It's free. Just text T H E O to 30, 30, 30. Oh, thank you guys for your patience, man. Oh. I think I have a slip disc like in the top of my back and man, it is It's a lot. Sorry to bring that on this show, but it is a lot at the moment. Let's get into some calls. You guys had some great calls and people saying what they done and thing like that. And I want to hear it you know, first we had that last week. Um, Want to say hit the hotline, man. Hit that H, baby. Hit the hotline. I think I'm losing my voice. Um, For uh, if you went to a special place to eat. You know, when I was young, we went to Blowjobs Pizza. BJ's Pizza, they called it. And they said it, it stood for BJ, uh, Black Jack's. But everybody knew the truth, baby. People was blowing each other, sucking off, you know. Touching dick to mouth, mouth to dick, baby. You know what I'm saying? Praise God, bro. So, um, here we go. A couple calls came in. Let's hear it. What's up, Theo? This is your boy, Brian. Coming at you from uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Oh, Brian. In St. Petersburg, dude. It's a good place to get a... Uh, Find a little buried treasure and maybe see a damn tattooed tit, bro. Oh, yeah. Come on, Omar. And I was just listening to your uh, Round Italians episode, and uh, you were talking about going to BJ's Pizza when you were a kid with your family. And you you asked us if we had any memories growing up of always going to a, an eatery. I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, and we'd go to this pizza place called Papa Paceros. Oh, Papa Paceros, huh? 
let's hear more about this about this beautiful spot <laughs> and you would think because it's chicago it's good pizza but but very similar to your bj's incident uh the pizza sucked man but i know they had cheap beer so my parents and my aunts and uncles would go out and on a Friday night, we'd all get beer and pizza, and they had a big old arcade, mm. and they'd send us into the arcade with, with some quarters. We'd play Mortal Kombat and all the games. And the one memory I had that stuck out is this one boy. I don't know his name, but he would always dominate the Mortal Kombat machine, and he would keep his quarters in his mouth. So it was the strangest thing, and he'd mm. get done beating somebody, flawless victory with Scorpio, and then he'd spit out like a little lizard, spit out a couple quarters. <laughs> throw them back in the machine say who's next damn man and that's a sign usually of a uh, eating disorder you know that could be some type of eating disorder maybe um but yeah I, every arcade had some kid at it that you didn't know from your town you're like who there's only 40 kids in town i knows them all and who is this magic man some little fellow named Laser or something. Every arcade had some weird ass kid that you never seen before. Who was always winning all the games and doing this and that. Dude, I was always the weirdo at arcade where I would like, I'd have to check every little thing. Then I'd go outside and check the newspaper machine, see if they had a quarter. And then um, sometimes the video game, somebody would have dropped a quarter and it would have got stuck under. So I'd look under there. Some of them might get a piece of paper and fold it over about four times, make me a paper stick. Make me a stick, but out of paper. It's almost like, because a paper was a stick. So really, you're just doing some damn, it's almost like when you see a mannequin made out of actual human body parts. You're like, damn, okay, this is, you know, this is back, back, forth, and forth. You know what I'm saying? This is refurbishment. But, um, but I'd make a paper stick and I would try to slide, reach under the machine and see if there was, because there's only about an eighth of an inch there. And it was dust in there. It's nasty. They usually have a little runt or a little gumball down there. And I would slide that paper trying to knock a quarter out the end. Um, or look behind the machine. I, there was a button behind the machine. Something you could press it. It would turn the machine on and off. And I would always like wait for it to come on and think it was going to let me have a free game. And it wouldn't. And then there was always the person that would sit there and watch you play all the games. That dude, that kid, whoever that kid was, a little Benji or a little Tragic. We had a little black kid bus named Tragic, right? And man, he would, he never had a damn dime, bro. He'd sit there and watch you play. He, would, he wouldn't say nothing, bro. Damn, he wouldn't say nothing. I don't know if he ever even said nothing. He might still be just looking at something. But, um, what else? What'd you say, man? Yeah, it was fun, though. The video games was a big part. And I would get, what was that game? Super Ice Brothers? Let me see. Super Ice. Super S Ice Bros? No, that wasn't it. Yeah, Super, maybe it was Smash Brothers, but it was an old one. I thought it was Ice Bros. Yeah, there was some game, just, I don't even know. Some of the games were just so old. Oh, Castlevania. And you get to, you know, it was like, I don't know what it was. It was like some guy that was like kind of like, it was like Zillow for vampires. It was like some guy that was looking for a castle, I guess. I don't remember he... You know, he just couldn't really find, I don't remember what it was. It was like five, I don't remember if the place had a draw. He didn't, what, he was fighting, but you were, he had a whip and you were angry at the realtors. And you were like looking for a nice castle, but you couldn't find what you wanted. Um, you know, you'd be in like a 60 bedroom castle and you'd be pissed off. The, it just, I don't know. I wasn't real good at it, but mom or dad give you that quarter and you go, oh, when you put that quarter in, just the feeling you had. I got a chance, all right. Hit the buttons a couple times before the game starts. Psh, 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 psh. Move the joystick. Man, it was fun. That was a good time. Thank you for the call. 
As always, the hotline, 985-664-9503. Let's hear another one. Hi, Theo Vaughn. It's Molly Martin from New Albany, Indiana. Molly Martin from New Albany, Indiana. And Indiana is a good place to really pull over on the side of the road and think about, you know, think about uh, some of the choices you've made. Onward, baby. Let's hear more. And I'm calling because I just listened to your episode today with Chris, the first person with Down syndrome to complete the Ironman. And I was crying from the first minute to, like, I was crying the whole whole episode. It was so heartwarming, especially because um, my older brother has Down syndrome. And it's- oh, okay. So you got that insider trading, baby. You really, that really would hit, that would hit a... Uh, close to home if you have that onward thank you for listening it just meant a lot to me to see the way that you gave him uh the space to express himself and you did such a good job of like asking him questions and um, and having conversation with him i was really impressed and touched by that and chris is so inspirational he's inspiring me to make my own dream board and to stop making excuses for myself of why i can't do this or that and um and to be focused every day on my dreams and um i also really hope that you guys do that double date um that you talked oh, yeah. about on the podcast oh yeah i think we'll we might try that i'm gonna aim for it you know i mentioned terrence terrence ross on the podcast and uh and he plays for orlando's magic and if if I can, when the world's open, I'll go to a game and see if we can't find a couple nickels, man. I mean, we'll take dimes, but we'll settle for nickels, baby. You feel me? Uh, but that'd be fun if me and Chris could go on a double date to the game. So I would love to do it. So I'm going to see if I can't make that happen. Um, and then, you know, obviously Terrence will have to get us tickets, but that's on Terrence. You know, that is on Terrence, man. That ain't my problem, Terrence. Uh, so we'll see what happens, man. But no, Molly, I appreciate you uh, checking it out. You know, man, I just went through such a week of like uplifting moments. There was um, there was the Chris interview. There was the Dustin win. Uh, Tom Brady making it back to the suit. Just things that made you feel hopeful, I think. Things that made you feel like, uh, like, like everything is like there's, like there's, there is magic happening, and I needed that. You know, and it was one of the most interesting things about being around Chris was, well, first just from looking at him, I there's there because there 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 heads this assumption that that there's something that he like he can't hear you sometimes or that he's not paying attention like um i don't know what it is you know and it's not from him it's just from being having been around other ds children and stuff like that and ds you know um and you know were you you kind of I don't know. I think I went into it with this curiosity, like, what is it really like to be inside of him? To you know, and not I'm not talking sexually or nothing like that. I'm talking uh, from a point of like, what is it like for his frame of reference for the world? You know, and how can I get that? How can I see what he's seeing? Because I had a time one time I was in a Halloween costume and I was in there and it was sweaty and I, I could look out the eye slots, but the 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 mask was real thick and and I couldn't move that great and it was hard people couldn't hear me and I felt like man I wonder if this is what it's like to have like a down syndrome or autism you know like you can see the world but it just can't you can't interact with it the way you want to cuz that's what I had felt I'd felt trapped a little um. So I think I wish I would have asked Chris more things like, uh, "What are things that he likes to smell?" You know, like, um, I wish I would have talked to him more about feelings, and asked his dad if he has like all the same feelings that 
uh, people without Down syndrome have, you know, non DSers. Um, but hey, I think there could be another opportunity. I was extremely just inspired by him. And also, it was cool to see he's 22. Or he's 20. I mean, he's 22 or 21. Who gives at that age? Who cares? You know, he's yeah, so he's thinking about women just like I was at that age, just like I still am half the time. So it's just dope to see that, look, he's still, he's feeling, he's trying to find this other element that may be out there for him, that lady, you know, smoking hot. I love that, man. He's going to be smoking hot, smoking hot. Man, but it was special and his dad was special and, uh, you know, I just felt lucky to be in their presence. That's kind of what I felt like. So. Yeah, God bless him, man. You know, and and yeah, we can do it, whatever it is. You know, what is it? What did he say? The pain or your dreams? The pain or your dreams? You know. And he just kept choosing his dreams. But thank you for that call, uh, Molly. And be safe out there. I saw an owl get uh, denigrated one time, or I don't know if that's a word, but killed by a tow truck over there on 52 or 53 heading from Indianapolis to uh, Bloomington. So, all right. Uh, let's take another call that came in right here, man. Um, here we go. Hey, Theo, this is Will. I wanted to call in, um, let you know about the, what restaurants I used to hit when I was a kid. <clears throat> it reminded me uh, when you were talking about uh, my mom taking me to uh, Hardee's when uh, she would be taking us to school in the morning. You know, there was uh, we'd always get a uh, little, uh, just a biscuit. You know, you get a biscuit real cheap, and then we'd get a little uh, the jelly packets for free, so we could have a biscuit with jelly. Oh, yeah, baby, that free jelly. God, whoever invented free jelly, baby, praise God. I mean, they knew, they knew, they knew I was going to come into the world and I would be looking for something like that. You know, sometimes when I think about, sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll lay in bed at night and just think about all the packets of free jelly that are out there. Behind every counter at every, you know, fast food joint, just right under the, just right under the ledge. Just a bucket of damn free jellies, baby. And dual jellies, strawberry and grape. Strawberry and red, baby. And some of them I just can't even sleep just thinking about all the individual packets. And you know, first jelly was all together and then they fucking separated it, man. And I don't know who came in, the Germans or a bunch of business people came in and just, you know, hey, 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 no, 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 yeah, no, 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 and then they put it all in a little packet, little orphan, little orphan tea tablespoons of jelly, bro. And I call it jelly sometimes. But damn, there's something beautiful, man. If you close your eyes and think about all the jelly that's out there. God, that's. I mean, that's remarkable. It's remarkable, brother. And yeah, I feel you, man. I remember when <clears throat> when we had a little bit of money when mom had sold something, you know, mom sometimes would sell different items. You know, when she did newspapers and she would do sometime uh you know, cookies, this company called Vortman Cookies. And I'd sneak out to her car at night and have me about thirty, thirty damn oatmeal cookies or something, you know, forty five shortbreads or all kind of shit. So full of cookie, I couldn't even get back to the house, man. So full, I couldn't even bend my body. I was walking like a gingerbread man. Which was ironic because I just had nine of them. And, uh, but sometimes mom would take us to get a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit from McDaniels, baby. God! I mean, I, that was my roof's crisp, daddy. 
And I remember the rapper at the time, it said bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit on it. So if a girl walked by, I'd fucking, well, I would wait till a girl walked by. And that's when I would open it so she would see the side. Bitch, I got all these ingredients up in there. You know? This that full Monty, baby. This that buffet grenade, baby. This bacon, egg, and yes. And there was something special about it, man. There was something about it. And I missed that, man. That was fun. And some of my, my father would go with us, too, when I was real young. He only went once or twice before we got they got divorced, but he 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 would go sometimes. But I remember that, man. It was nice, man. I felt, man, I felt fancy. I really, really felt fancy when we got that. Um let's take another call. Here we go. Yo, what up, Theo? It's me, Aiden Elliot, down from here in Georgia. What's up, Elliot? Down there in Georgia, brother. You know, not the country in Europe, but, you know, the state. Oh, yeah. Georgia's a good place to get a, a hickey from somebody who, you know, who, uh, really, for anybody. Some some people, they give it to you as a form of payment. You know, they paint, they paint you know. You paint their fence and they come out and suck on your neck for 30 seconds, bro. It's just that kind of town, baby. Let's go, gang. God's good, baby. But what I'm wondering is rumors are spreading around my old high school that I'm a homosexual. You know, kids thinking I'm a I'm gay, really. And it, Oh, yeah, gay man, gay adult. Yes, sir, onward. It's pretty stressful, okay, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't want people to think that of me. Nothing wrong with that. But, you know, I'm just not personally into men like that i like women you know but you know they're over here saying i like men mm -hmm. and that's a lot on my plate so i just need some advice for that take it easy have a wonderful day gang brother and look i feel for you man i know it's uh you know i don't think that you know people don't like rumors and rumor is just a fairy tale that's fired specifically at you like a gun like one person pulls out a damn fairy tale gun and just, you know, caps your ass. That's rumor. And and if they say and use uh in the homosexuality, then that's that could be alarming because if you're in a small area and you there's only about 9 women a day, to five of them hear the rumors, you're down to four women. You know? And if one of them doesn't like athletic activities and you like to jog in the morning, then you're down to three women. So, yeah, it's tough when rumors like that happen. But some of it, you just got to man up and just, you know, I, maybe it's maybe it's a sign that you need to start taking dating seriously. It could be another man in town planted the rumor because they're trying to get the real dimes. And you over here penny pension, you know what I'm saying? So you're going to be stuck. You're going to be stuck with a woman that's less than a nickel, dog, unless you get out there and hunt. Because if he says that, and then the local ladies say, oh, well, look, you know, little Elliot out there slurping that bone, then I, you know, I can't offer him. I have nothing to offer him because I got titty. But um, what I would say is, man, uh, well, first of all, there's always, when I was young, it, they had a rumor if you had on a, a turtleneck, you was gay, you were gay or flirting for gay. You know, basically bait fishing for gay. You was letting other gay men or, you know, kind of homeowners or whatever know that you were available. And I didn't know that shit, man. And I remember a turtleneck truck uh, broke down near our house and somebody robbed it or whatever. And next thing you know, everybody in our neighborhood had turtlenecks. Blue and green. And we'd wear them bitches, man. People was cutting the sleeves off them, cutting the turtle off them, cutting the neck off them, people grilling them. Some people thought it was made out of real turtle, made soup out of them. You know, it was a different time. But suddenly, a lot of men, you know what I'm saying, men, uh, showed up in our neighborhood because they saw all the turtlenecks. 
and they come over and kind of, you know, ask you how you was doing or try and give you a little butterscotch or something. So it's risky, man. It's a, you know, but there's always stuff that's going to happen and it's how you react to it, brother. And I don't think this is that big of an issue, but, you know, I think maybe it's just a sign that it's time for you to get out there and start being real with these ladies. And quit pee footing around, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, let's hear another call that came in, man. And thank you guys. I want to say thank you for supporting this podcast and for being a part of my life. Um, you know, I feel so, so grateful. We have a lot of, uh, man, I just feel grateful. I feel grateful. I'm just glad that I started podcasting. You know, I didn't know that I was going to do podcasting. And then I started. So. Let's take one or two more calls here, man. Let's see what we got right here. Uh, Onward. What up, Theo? This is Kellen from Michigan. What's up, Kellen? And uh, Michigan is a good place to fuck somebody with uh, mittens on. Let's hear more. Um, last week you were talking about special restaurants or places you would go. And you brought up Tim Hortons, so I thought I'd use Tim Hortons. When I was a kid, I, we would go camping in Canada. and Oh, that's a good good way to go missing onward. We'd get Tim Hortons, you know, their bagels and mm. good coffee and shit. I guess I didn't get the coffee. I was a kid. Them bagels, baby, them Jewish rounds, baby, onward. But... I always thought Tim Hortons was just in Canada. And then we went downstate to the cities. And I was like, oh, Tim Hortons is everywhere. Anyways, I always thought that was cool. And when I go there today, I think about camping with my parents and stuff. So, gang, gang. Gang, gang, brother. That's an anticlimactic story. But, you know, I will say there's something fa there's something unique when you find out that Whatever is yours locally is everywhere. I remember that. I remember thinking, wait, 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 McDonald. They have a McDonald's. You know, Josh has a McDonald's in his in in his town. You know, they have a McDonald's across the bridge. They have two McDonald's. Yeah, I thought McDonald's was just mine, just ours when we was young, and that orange soda. God, it was good. Damn. My God, it was good. Um, but thank you for calling, brother. Appreciate that. All right, let's take one more call that came in here, man. Onward. Hi, Theo. My name's John. I'm from upstate New York. I'm 17 years old. I'm a senior in high school, and I'm going off to, uh, well, I'm going off to the world after this. And I. Thank you for calling, John. I appreciate you, brother. And I appreciate you. And I'm uh, uh, in uh, upstate New York. And they cut somebody's head off one time up there on a Greyhound bus, man. And I'm sorry for reminding everybody about that. And I didn't plan on reminding you, but I just said it. And then I realized, you know, that I'd said it. Um, I can't believe you're 17. Jeepers, man. You're in high school. You're about to graduate from what? Sounding like an adult? Technical? institution bro i can't believe dude you sound like <laughs> bro hold on a second let's go back and hear you dog and i love you brother i do want to tell you that onward theo my name's john i'm from upstate new york i'm 17 years old. hi theo my name's john <laughs> hi theo my name's john i'm from upstate new york i'm laughing down dude you sound 52 years old brother uh and you're going out to see the world? Were you in a Charles Dickens novel? Let's hear more. Old. I'm a senior in high school, and I'm going off to, uh, well, I'm going off to the world after this. And I The world? Are you Lenny from Of Mice and Men? Is this Brendan? Is this Brennan Shaw who owes me that thousand? Onward. I, I'm just not quite sure what I want to do with my life. You know, I, I work hard. I, I don't get the best grades in school, but I work hard. And uh, I just want to hear your thoughts on this. What do you think a young man should do? Thank you very much. Gang, brother. Gang, brother. And I'm sorry I was making fun of you, man, but also I was just having a good time. 
what would I do if I was 17 right now with a deep voice? I'd probably do some fucking, honestly. If I'm real honest with you, man, I'd do mating. I'd mate with women. With that voice, man, you could you could probably make love to half your mother's friends. But um, what would I do if I were 17? You know, if you weren't really sure what you would wanted to do, I, I, I don't think joining the military would be a bad idea. Because you're going to get a lot of direction. You're going to get... Uh, physically in shape, you're going to get camaraderie. And I don't think we're going to hand-to-hand combat anymore. We've kind of evolved out of a lot of that. You know, a lot of war now is more press of a button, more pomp and circumstance. You know, more kind of like the introductions, but not the actual start of the round. Um... So I and here's the thing: you'd be done by 21, and your the rest of your life you would hit, you would be so regimented, I think, and have such a good structure that from then on you would be able to achieve anything you wanted. If I could go back in time, I'd have more structure. That's what I would have. Um. So, what else? Hmm. I don't know, man. Maybe race carring. You know, start with like a real beater or something. Start with maybe a Toyota Tercel or something. A Hyundai or something like that. Get out there, dodge neon, soup that bitch up. Dodge neon. Um, I'm upstairs. Uh. Yeah, I would do something like that, maybe. I don't know, man. What is it, you know? I would learn digital, some type of a digital skill. Or I'd learn how to teach people to hunt with birds. You know, I would just find something that you kind of like. And if you don't know what you like, then try things until you find something you do. You know, one time I remember I went up to the counter at this recreational facility and there was a cute girl working there and I was trying to holler at her and this was about nine years ago and and I was kind of bored in my life I was just bored and she said well if you're bored you're boring that's what she said and I'm not saying that you're bored brother I'm not saying that you're brother I'm not, I'm not saying that you're bored John from New York that's 50 or 40 um But there's a lot of things out there, man. And we just got to go do them and try them out. So I'd say just make a little list of things that you love or things even that you're afraid of. And like Brooks was said, like Brooks said, man, get busy living. You know, I don't know if he said it or not. He died. He died at the grocery store and he killed himself. But, um... What else, man? I think that's about it, brother. Uh, That's it, man. I want to thank you guys. We didn't do intro music on this one. You know, sometimes we have trouble getting some of the music cleared. Uh, But next week, we'll get back to some music. So, it's kind of interesting having, having no music. You know, it keeps the egg right on the grill, I feel like. It doesn't give me as much to hide behind. So, but we'll talk. I got some personal stuff I want to bring up next time, and we'll get into some of it or whatever. Nothing real crazy, but just want to, you know, share just some things that's going on, and and um, and just to say thank you, man. Thank you for being a part of my life and a part of this interesting journey that I've gotten to go on with podcasting and talking to unique people that are having unique lives and. And I don't get to talk to them if you're not here with me. Um, Because all I'm doing is just listening, really. Same as you. So, uh, you guys be good to yourselves, man. And, uh, And I love you. 
And I mean that. I even lived I even love John's old ass, little forty, fifty year old ass, bro. Hi, 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 Theo. I'm five. I'm six years old. Hi, Theo. I'm four. Yeah, I've been working at the factory. I don't. Yeah, I can't even. Say, I can't even buy a can of dip in my crib. <laughs> oh man. Ah. Uh, you guys be good to yourselves, man. How about that diamond, baby? Pretty cool. Pretty cool to watch. A lot of neat stuff happening in the world, man. And it can happen to other people and it can happen to us, man. You guys be good to yourselves, man. Gang. Let's go, Bishop Gunn, baby. Making it. hundred days I can almost hear mama pray for my restless soul and I ain't made a dollar I ain't spent but where it's going ain't killed me yet I still get where I'm bound to go I'm tired man let's go baby I'm making it come on I'm making wrong feel right I'm making it, and if hell's where I'm headed then I'm making good time Say that I'm about an hour past the minute I should have put it down But I'm making it I'm making wrong Feel right I'm making it And if hell's where I'm headed there I'm making good time in pretty good shape for the shape that i'm in that's the truth you guys be good to yourselves man you deserve it and uh and uh i'll see you next week gang